Fox 21 here back with another Splinterlands video. So you're going to get a lot of Grandmaster Wraith content from me because I think it's an extremely underrated summoner. And I'm hearing a lot of talk about how people are underwhelmed and, you know, they wanted something that was crazy powerful. Um, you know, and of course I understand that, but I think people are really overlooking this card. And to show you, I am going to walk through rule set by rule set, um, you know, we're here on splinter cards and talk about the, you know, there's a surprising amount of rule sets in which Grandmaster Wraith is going to, um, you know, receive big benefits from, or you're going to be able to use confidently. Um, but yeah, before we get into that, you know, I appreciate you being here and uh, it would be awesome if you could like this video and subscribe to it. Uh, keep trying to grow the channel, uh, getting closer and closer to the 1000 subscriber mark. And it's a really helpful, motivating factor for me to keep making videos like this and spreading the good word of Splinterlands. All right, let's get into it. I'll probably do something similar to this for all of the summoners uh, I'm imagining. But for now, obviously going to start with Grandmaster Wraith. That's the only one we have. And we're just going to take it from top left to right and then bottom left to right. All right, first we have standard, obviously, you know, nothing in particular. That's just the summoner itself. True aim, there's nothing specific that Grandmaster Wraith, you know, alters or helps with. Armored up's a big one. You know, every monster getting two armor, which will now automatically be voided, plus the additional armor from Grandmaster Wraith. So, you know, not only is it two additional armor, it's two voided armor you now get. You know, and Grandmaster Wraith is also unique here because you'll normally get either a lot of magic being played in armor up to sort of try to ignore the additional armor that everyone gets or you'll see them bring a rust monster in which case you know if they bring a bunch of magic your voided armor is going to be you know fantastic for this and if they bring a rust monster the additional um armor from grandmaster wraith will replace one of the two that they're taking away so you'll still everyone will still be left with at least one armor that will be voided so yeah big bonus to armored up back to basics this is the sneaky one that i think grandmaster wraith is going to be perfect for so i've talked a bit about how one voided armor is very close to a divine shield just that like it's going to soak up one attack of any kind um and of any amount it's, you know, it's a little different from Divine Shield in that, you know, if you have, your armor will disappear, right? Where if you, if your armor has, if your monster has shield in Holy Protection or has Divine Shield, the shield's not going to disappear. So slightly different, but similar concept specifically in the Back to Basics rule set. Think about how good Lorna Shine is in this Back to Basics rule set, because it's basically just a math problem, right? It's, you're trying to balance the damage you're bringing out versus the health you're putting out. And generally, whoever has the most damage without giving up the most health. And then there's also some luck factors where, you know, if you have a big four magic monster going and your opponent has a one health in the beginning, you're wasting four of your magic on that attack to wipe it out. So there is a timing luck factor involved. But for the most part, it's a math problem. And adding avoided armor to every single monster is in this rule set is effectively holy protection exactly what Lorna Shine gives, the Divine Shield to everyone. So it just really changes the math problem to your favor. It's an additional hit that every one of your monsters will be able to take before dying. But this gives a little extra bonus that Lorna Shine doesn't, which is it makes a lot of shielded monsters viable in this rule set, or it increases um, the power of shielded monsters in this rule set. A lot of times you don't bring monsters with a lot of shield because you're getting a ton of magic. So it's just gonna, the magic's gonna cut right through um, the monster's health, not touching its shield. So it's almost like a wasted thing to bring a monster with a ton of shield. But now, you know, think about bringing the shield bearer in the back to basics rule set. It's gonna take such a long time for all of their magic attacks to get through shield bearer, where normally you would never play him in back to basics. Now he becomes like, unless there was also like no magic. When I talk about these, I'm talking about them just as standalone rule sets. You know, as you start combining, obviously, games change and stuff like that but yeah i think back to basics is a huge um rule set in which i will be using grandmaster wraith a lot broken arrows is another big one you know obviously you're going to see more magic and more melee and the theme of what we talk about today is if i can predict the location of your attack 
or the type of attack. If I have Amplify, I'm, which is what you know, what I think is the coolest thing that Grandmaster Wraith brings. If I can predict where it's going to be or the type using Grandmaster Wraith, I'm going to have a huge advantage. Um, you know, specifically for this one, additional bonuses for the Voided Armor because you're going to see more magic um, in this rule set. So the Voided Armor is always going to be useful. You know, unless they bring full melee. But again, you know, I can bring thorns. Thorns is a little tricky because magic and neutrals don't have a ton of great thorns yet. You know, that could obviously come later in the future releases and stuff like that. But Broken Arrows, huge plus. Voided Armor, I know magic is most likely coming. I can set up the Shield Reflex or the uh, Reflect Magic and then, um, you know, send all of that Amplified back. So Broken Arrows is a big one. Close range, not really. Um, you know, additional armor helps in this rule set, obviously. Um, you know, and you do know you're probably going to get a decent amount of ranged attacks, or at least more more than you would normally expect, given that they can attack from the front. So you could probably, with confidence, bring some return fire, which would be amplified. Um, so a little, a little boost, I would say, but nothing really. Same with Earthquake, just the additional shield helps with Earthquake. Little boost, nothing crazy, or nothing we haven't seen before, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so the additional shield helps. Same with equal opportunity, the additional shield helps. Um, you know, giving everyone a shield. You know, specifically avoided shield helps in particular because, you know, everyone has opportunity, even the magic attacks in the back. So it's just going to help your monster that's being targeted survive a little bit longer. It's a little bit of a boost. Equalizer, same thing, a little bit of a boost. Um, you know, think about Chaos Knight, for example. It doesn't have a ton of health. Um, it's going to be good with the Voided Armor, but now you're also boosting its health up. A little bit of a boost, not really. You know, there's some of those monsters that have a ton of shield and not a lot of health um, that are really great for Equalizer. And they're just going to be slightly better um, with Grandmaster Wraith, just given that they have Voided Armor. So minor boost. Nothing particular with Evens. Small boost with Blast, for sure. Um, you can just fill your back lines. You can just fill, if you could just put out a bunch of Magic Reflect and Return Flyer monsters, um, you know, as multiple monsters are getting hit, they're all going to be throwing it back in an amplified manner at your opponent. Um, so minor boost, plus the shield, additional shield, Voided Shield also helps keep your monsters alive more. Because, um, you know, the attack is going to have to hit the shield. Fog of War is a big one. Um, similar concept, if I know where your attack's going and I have Amplify, I can plan around it. You know, so for this one, you're basically limited to attacks to the front because it takes away Sneak and Snipe or Opportunity monsters. Um, but for the most part, I generally plan around attacks coming to the front. So what I can now do is I can set up my first two monsters to have Magic Reflect and Return Fire with my Amplify. And I know they're gonna have to go through those two with their attacks being thrown back at them with, as Amplified attacks. So I'm gonna just keep saying it over and over again. And then I can put sort of big damage monsters in the back or healers um, and just keep those guys alive in the front. And just go for survivability in the front because they're not gonna be able to access my back line unless they bring opportunity. So big boost of, uh, in Fog of War. No healing, nothing in particular, I don't think. Heavy hitters, not really. I mean, I guess if you're stunned and have the shield that they give you, and then the next attack is going to be the times two attack, it'll just hit the one shield, so very minor. Minor to Holy Protection, but kind of like what we talked about. It'll, it just almost gives a second Holy Protection in a lot of manners, so nothing crazy. Keep your distance is another big one. Same thing, if I have better insight into the attack you're gonna bring, you know, here I know it's either gonna be magic or it's gonna be ranged, I can bring return fire and magic reflect monsters, utilize that amplify, um, and there's the additional bonus thing here with the keep your distance of, I know it's basically gonna be sneak, no, not sneak, sorry. I know it's gonna be snipe or to my front line. There's not a ton of opportunity and there's not a ton of sneak monsters that are range and magic. You can see that they've slowly started to add more and more of those into the game. Uh, 
you know, just because there is a lack of them. But until there is in the keep your distance, I generally expect frontline and snipes. So I can set up, utilize this Amplify, uh, and I'll be in an advantage using Grandmaster Wraith and keep your distance. Doesn't qualify for Little League, so we can skip that one. Let's just recap the top row. I'm just going to go over the big ones. Armored up, huge advantage. Back to basics might be the biggest advantage to me, and I think this one's not being talked about and slept on. Big bonus in both broken arrows. Small close range, small earthquake, small equal opportunity, small equalizer, nothing. Small um, explosive weaponry. Fog of War is a big one. Nothing here, nothing really here. Small here, big here, doesn't qualify for here. Nothing really here. Similar idea, it's less good than Broken Arrows, um, just because you know you don't benefit from the extra, you know the voided armor given the extra magic attacks. But if I know I'm gonna get a bunch of ranged attacks, I can utilize that amplify. So same thing. If I know where your attack's going or the kind, um, Grandmaster Wraith is gonna help me. Melee mayhem. Normally, yes, but there's just not that many thorns options. Um, if I go to another tab here, and I, I already have thorns up because I was looking at this. My thorns options in modern are Crystal Jaguar, only one for life. Um, and then these these two right here, Onyx Sentinel and Cornelius. So there's just really not a lot of thorns options to take advantage of this melee stuff for now. I mean, obviously the extra shield helps, but until they bring more thorns options in life or neutrals, you know, preferably life, um, the melee is just not going to be as good as, you know, defending against the other ones. The ranged or magic with Grandmaster Wraith. Noxious Fooms, nothing in particular. Odd ones out, nothing. Reverse speed, not really. Rise to the commons, nothing specific. Obviously nothing for Silent Summoners. Spreading Fury, nothing specific. I mean, I guess the one shield, right? If, if you have a ticked off monster that's uh, enraged, then and it hits your one shield that'll only hit for one, so, unless that is piercing. So maybe a little bit here. Stampede, kind of, just giving everyone a shield is gonna not, unless, again, unless the monster has piercing, is not gonna allow the um, stampeding monster to, or the trample monster to just like demolish your team. Super Sneak, kind of same setup to Melee Mayhem. Once there's more thorns, Grandmaster Wraith will be fantastic, or I guess I should say if there's more thorns, but until there is, it's, you know, it's mild. No neutrals, nothing in particular. Target practice is a big one, same thing. If I know that range and magic attacks are gonna go to my second position, I can set up magic reflects and um, return fires in that spot, utilize the Amplify, send them back. Um, so target practice is a big one. This is bad, right? Obviously, you're not going to use Grandmaster Wraith and Unprotected because you lose the voided armor and you lose the additional armor that he gives. So Unprotected, Grandmaster Wraith is borderline unusable. Up close and personal, the additional shield helps, but again, with the lack of thorns, it's not a huge boost. If we get more thorns monsters, yes, 100% would be viable. And then weak magic takes away the voided armor. So like you can still utilize the amplify and like in general in weak magic, you're gonna, you know you're gonna see more archery attacks. So you could use the amplify in that way. But if it's gonna wipe out, you know, the void armor, it, you know, it, yeah, I'm I'm probably not using Grandmaster Wraith that often in the weak magic rule set specifically. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a quick video, just sort of walking through. I guess we'll, again, one more recap. Armored up, big advantage. Back to basics, big advantage. Broken arrows, big advantage. Fog of war, big advantage. Keep your distance, big advantage. Lost magic, big advantage. Stampede, I would say medium advantage. These, these three melee ones, advantage once there's thorns or if there's thorns, but until then, you just can't really take advantage of what would be an advantage. Uh, and then target practice is the last big advantage. So yeah, that is a lot of rule sets that Grandmaster Wraith is going to have or get boosted by. 
But I think that's a part of the game that not a lot of people think about. People are just looking at that card in a vacuum. But in reality, you're normally having one of these. And the whole idea is to build a deck that you have options given, you know, any variety of rule sets. And, I, you know, to me, there's a sizable amount of rule sets that Grandmaster Wraith is going to be fantastic for. Uh, I'm going to stop it there. You know, I'm going to, I'm sort of sipping the Grandmaster Wraith Kool-Aid. I think the hate it's receiving is completely unwarranted. And, you know, I, you know, obviously Kitty's super overpowered and that's going to be the summoner I use the most. But as of right now, Grandmaster Wraith is probably going to be my second most used summoner. I don't have the other end untamed legendaries, obviously, but to me, I don't have another summoner that I can compete with Grandmaster Wraith. So I'm super, super excited for this card. Um, I think it's super versatile, as you can see, with the amount of rule sets it's in. And yeah, I'm going to do more and more content Grandmaster Wraith related. Um, still going to get the new rewards cards to you soon. Just I'm super excited about the summoner, so focusing on, on that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to end it here. Thanks for being here. If you enjoyed the video, it would be awesome if you can like and subscribe. Also, please come check out my Twitter. Um, you know, I, I put out the most content there just because it's easy to toss out a tweet. So if you want sort of more live thoughts of me or like what I'm buying, what I'm selling on like a day to day basis, um, come check me out there. You can see the link to my Twitter in my bio. All right. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for being here.